So uh, I come to Chile to work uh, here with some colleagues of mine uh, who work in the Nucleo Project FAIR, which stands for Future Artificial Intelligence Research. And um, they are people from different disciplines working here in Chile at the universities, computer science, literature, um, sociology, design. And um, yeah, we've uh, just launched the project in the Museo Precolombino. And it's very interesting for me to come to see this museum because, of course, uh, it's all about technology and um, the Museo Interactivo is about technology. Um, we research at the FAIR project, um, the futures of artificial intelligence and culture plays a really important role to shift the frame slightly of artificial intelligence to bring out how uh, computer science has a very specific logic which is very techno solution oriented. But there are a lot of elements that cannot be broken down to technology. And where are the limits and where aren't the limits is something that you can explore very well with artistic work or with uh, questioning um, contemporary artificial intelligence as it stands. So we're trying to understand the technology very much. Uh, and um, in my own work, I work with a creative AI lab in London. So we are sort of um, a friendly partner with FAIR. Uh, and the creative AI lab is exploring um, how artists use artificial intelligence differently and artists are much more playful, they are very interested in the glitches, they are interested in the moments when AI doesn't work, which are, is very interesting because it shows you how it actually works. Because it's not human intelligence, it has a very particular approach, always coming from the smallest elements, looking at uh, and then scaling those up through probabilistic or stochastic calculation. And that's super interesting how it actually works. So we're working with poets, building poetry with artificial intelligence. We're working with um, artists who use uh, AI to communicate with an octopus, actually. Uh, ethics Labs does that. So we're working with these sort of speculative uh, projects that explore AI and a different side of AI. So um, we work a lot with um, artists who are very interested in the technology and they don't want to use the technology of big technology corporations and we see actually that it's a bit of a problem because it's sort of underdeveloped public infrastructure. So it's really important um, that museums, for example, build networks together to share the technology, to build different approaches to that technology because the more approaches there are, the better. Um, we, uh, yeah, we look, uh, for example, on our website, we have mapped open source technology and open access material that's available for artists to work with on the Creative AI Lab website. And we're trying to, because museums are um, public institutions that want to communicate to the public, and therefore it's also important that the technology is not commercial technology, but sort of in the public interest. Um, there are not that many projects out there at the moment. The logic's very much, um, yeah, sort of tending a bit towards the commercial, but it can be done. So the interesting thing with artists is also that they uh, show us uh, that you do not need a lot of money to create AI, and you do not need uh, like big, huge tech corporations to work with AI. There are smaller models, there are smaller projects which you can uh, do and that actually go very far. So uh, I think by now, uh, yeah, GitHub and sort of different online repositories help artists to find their way through that. Um, one thing why it's very inspiring to come to Chile is because Chile has some um, history with um, developing a different AI uh, and a different way of uh, artificial intelligence for the public interest and of course that's the project Cinco or CyberSign in English um, which was established here under Salvador Allende and has its 50th anniversary this year I think or yeah so that's a very interesting project to study 
as a for early form of AI and um, a socialist interpretation of how uh, machine intelligence can be used to um, create a future state. So I think that's a super interesting project. And I'm very happy to sit in this chair, <laughs> which is a chair that is built after the prototype in the project. Well, I think um, there are two different ways. I mean, um, to connect technology and politics, it is first of all important to understand that the technology should not only be developed by um, the commercial side. There needs to be a strong logic and also knowledge of the technology on the public and political side. So I think um, a democratic way of doing AI, it's very important to open the pro process up. So at the moment we imagine artificial intelligence as something that automates stuff, then, then delivers outcomes to the people. And I think it's much more important to integrate the people much earlier. So questions of participation in the development and not in the testing at the very end are very important. So very early on, integrate people uh, to develop artificial intelligence, communicate with the computer scientists and integrate the community uh, that the AI will be used in and used for. And for me, it's very inspiring as a researcher to come to Chile because Chile is a place where uh, participation, community, collaboration is very much in the DNA of this country and really, really important much more important than in the North. So I think um, there's much we can learn from and thinking about, because uh, the question of participation in the development AI is really, really important. And I think uh, that can be uh, one point that we need to develop much stronger. Of course, the other point is uh, finding a way of regulation. And actually, if you speak to businesses, they like regulation because if the state develops points of regulation early, they know exactly what they need to deal with and they're not uh, rolling out a process that they then have to reinvent in the middle. So um, regulation and developing a law uh, to frame AI in a positive, constructive way is super important and I think Chile has done um, a very important law in neuroscience so I think um, going in that direction um, with AI would also be quite interesting. <laughs>